This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello, today we're talking about the Anshan Gong Lu, which is the hairpin turn. That was Mandarin Chinese, at least I tried my best. In German, it's a beautiful name. We call it Serpentine. In the German pronunciation, it's Serpentine. And uh, in Espanol, Orquilla, uh, which is basically a curve. And how about Netherlands? Haarspeldbocht which is basically like in English. Uh, anything else we can consider here? Italian, for example, Italiano. Tornante. It's totally different. All different languages have different words for this uh, nice structure here. First of all, I thought how trivial to model a street going up in such a looping, winding way. But it's not trivial at all. The orange or brown object you see is my attempt to create a landscape for it. You can actually start with an attempt which will fail and that's what I'm going to show you at the beginning of this tutorial. We create a NURB sphere and a really large plane for the ground. Add a few deformations so it looks like a more or less like a mountain. I'm speeding up this tutorial so uh, you don't I have to wait for ages until I'm done with this structure here. And now I make the sphere a life object. That means when I draw a curve, I draw the curve on that object now, on the sphere. You can actually only move the curve on that surface. Now I deactivate the lifeness, so we can keep on uh, modeling in a regular way. And now I duplicate that surface curve. And you see it's a duplicator when I move it away it's, it's there and the blue one is still the curve on that object. I duplicate it again and now move it a little bit outward and now I create a loft and this is my the street. It is really bad it doesn't serve the purpose. It does a good job when it's flat but the windingness of that road is really failing because the inner part needs to go to the outer part, etc. We don't have to discuss this. Find it out for yourself. I find it, found it quite educational to try this out. You can uh, change the settings here of the, of the loft, but it does not really help. So we'll go for another attempt. And for that attempt, we pretend that we're actually working on the asphalt. And uh, you start with something from the bottom and then you slowly make work your way up. With the grid snapping here, which is the key X, I create a curve which is totally straight. Now I duplicate it and move it a little bit to the right and slightly up. And you can use two keystroke shortcuts which are very useful here. One is just the duplication like Control D for duplicate but with a Shift D key you move and translate and rotate and sc scale in case of sh scaling you transform the object in the way the last two ones were transformed. Now I'm getting close to my first bend. Critical thing here is, or well, it's not really critical but uh, you, you really should think about getting equal distances sort of in order to get a nice surface from them. And another thing to consider is only rotate the curves in the up axis because we want to keep everything flat for now. We'll change things, we'll adjust things later. The curves are actually climbing up with that Shift D command here, really nice and elegant in this case.
Now I select them all in the sequence how that I created them and create a loft. And that loft looks much better than the one in the first experiment. And now I go back to certain curves to make them, to tilt them in another direction. Because I don't want the cars when they drive up at high speed, I don't want them to be thrown off that track in the curves. That's minor adjustments and with the construction history of course it's it affects the the loft, the whole road. Now a new material, I go for a lamp shader because the asphalt is not really shiny and I apply a grid you need to play with these parameters in order to see what is U, what is V in this case, and I think it's not a problem for you to find out how this can be adjusted. The starting point of my road is a little bit too steep. So I flatten it by going back to the curves, of course. And I can add a few bumps into the road by just selecting certain curves and moving them up or down. Now it's time for the car. And the car is under sculpting base meshes and vehicles. You just double click any of them, I'm choosing the Sedan, and it lands in the scene, you don't see it because it's so big. It comes in dimensions of meters and we're working currently in dimensions of centimeters, that's what the grid is shaped like. Now I select all the objects of the car, that's the four wheels and the chassis, and I put them in a group. And I can change the name of the group to car. And this is very effective, really, because now I can scale it down effectively and attach it to that road. And that's the next step I'm going to do. Also interesting here, I can change this later, but in this case it just functions perfectly. The pivot is at the level of the bottom of the wheels which is ideal for us. Now I rotate it and I want to do a rotation which is quite precise, 180 degrees. I use the attribute editor for this. And now with the right mouse button I select an isopalm or isopalm and move it to the right. That's where I want our car to drive on and I duplicate that curve and call it my motion path. Now I select the car and then, the, the sequence is important, I go to animation and motion paths, the motion path. And now the car is attached to that right lane curve and it drives up crosswise. Which is of course not what we want, but we're almost there as you can see. So let's go to the motion path node in the attribute editor and you can change the front axis from X to Z and we're done. It's usually a bit of fiddling around with the parameters. I never know what they exactly do unless I really think deeply about them. But now we have our car in the proper orientation. What else can we do? Well, in the actually winding part here, in that curve, we want it to slow down. So we select the motion path, not the car, and we go to Windows, Animation, and the Graph Editor. And this is the curve which describes the flow of our car. It starts slowly and it ends slowly and in the middle it accelerates. We can select the curve and insert a key right here. Move a little bit forward, select the curve again, set another key here. Now in between 
when we set another key and select that key so it's white we can move it up or down or left or right and you see we're moving the car in the time structure here and you already see it slows down then it accelerates even harsher so you have to fiddle around with these things quite a bit until you're satisfied and you have a slow motion around that curve you have to use the translation tool for this which is the key W and you can move the keyframe in all dimensions up and down left or right but with the middle mouse button you can restrict the motion the translation to up and down only or left and right only now I'm trying to sort of show you how to model the landscape this is just a very crude easy start I set the first point with curve snapping that's holding down the key C for curve to the cur to the curves of the road where I actually want my mountain to develop sometimes the curve snapping doesn't know exactly what kind of uh, cur uh, curve you mean but you can get closer to it and then it's going to be all right so then I go to the side view and place a last one further up and the last one is more or less going straight down straight up and I want to move it a little bit to the right in this case so I pick the CV up here and move it to the right and now I do the same with two more curves and if you want to have a whole landscape you can use as many curves as you like obviously curve snapping is here absolutely crucial because otherwise you will set your points of the curves somewhere in space and you want to have them precisely at the inside of our street and now of course you create a loft from the three of them and you already see that this can be kind of a mountain structure when it looks black just reverse the NURBS surface by going to modeling and then reverse this obviously needs another color just to make a difference here from there you can add grass using paint effects or trees but keep in mind they don't render properly in Arnold you have to convert them to polygons in order to do this I just want to give you the hint it's under generate make paintable you need to make that surface paintable first then you get a brush which is basically your grass in this case you select the grass from the get brush menu or later a tree and then you just paint on that surface with the key B pressed you change the size of the plants here But this doesn't really have to do anything with NURBS modeling of a hairpin turn. And with this, I wish you a very, very good day. Bye-bye.